praise God. Welcome to Almost Midnight. We are looking at Are We Really Turning It Over to God Part 2. Just praising God and just letting some worship music play while I wait to see who is coming on. Praise God. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is our helper. Oh, Jesus, lead us and show us the way to follow you. Praise the Lord. Someone is on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to see who is on. I don't quite see the comments yet. Praise the Lord and see so I can see who's on. Hallelujah. So, there is someone on. Hallelujah. So, we're going to be opening up in prayer in a moment. I'm looking on. Here we go. Amen, Jesus. So, someone is here. Oh, praise God. I'm blessing Sister Andrews. It's so wonderful to have you. Amen. So I was just playing some worship music while I was waiting for someone to come on. Just praising God for another day. Yes, I wasn't able to come on today to Apostle um, Joseph's uh, teaching today. On do, do did you tell God that you love you um, love him today yes um, yesterday um, I uh, was asked to teach um, Bible study at another church in um, Georgia and then at midnight um, I taught another church in Pakistan so it was my first time uh, teaching in Pakistan Pakistan with a interpreter so and they had a lot of difficulty getting things connected so it didn't start at midnight it started almost 1 a.m. and so by the time we finished it was very late and so I was exhausted so I was just um, sleeping amen so praise God let us begin well Lord God in the mighty name of Jesus Lord just giving you all the honor and the praise and the glory Lord God, just thanking you for another day, Lord God, just thanking you, Lord God, for all that you have done in our lives, Lord God, knowing and recognizing that one day, Lord, we will be with you in heaven, and Lord God, you will show us a record, a, a visible record, a, like a recording, Lord God, so that we can see all the times you stepped in and rescued us, Lord God, all the times you just stepped in and sent your holy angels. Lord God, to protect us, Lord God, to war against the weapons of the enemy on our behalf. So, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for uh, times that you were helping us and we didn't even know it, Lord God. Just thanking you for your grace and your mercy and your love, Lord God, that, Lord God, even in the midst of adversity and challenge, Lord God, even um, in the midst of so much that we were going through, Lord, we could still see your hand. We could still feel your love so lord god we just ask you to bless this teaching lord god that you will continue to bless your people lord god we 
truly are living in the latter days. It's almost midnight, Lord God. And your church, we're prepare you prepare us and make us ready, Lord God, for your return. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Um, so just thanking God, um, Sister Andrews, um, you're still um the only viewer on right now. Um, praise God. Um, so blessings to you. Um, be um, we'll give it, let's see, maybe five more minutes. Um, is there a question um that you would like to ask or something you would like me to talk about in the next five minutes? Something you want, maybe you want clarity on or something like that? while we wait to see if someone else comes on. You know, I was um, just really uh, praising God while I wait for your hands. I was just really praising God um, for the opportunity to minister to um, the women in Pakistan. You know, it's, um, it's very impoverished there and they just had a flood about a week ago. And the pastor asked if I would um, teach and encourage their hearts. And, you know, Pakistan, there's a lot of persecution of Christians there. Christians are being killed in Pakistan for standing for what they believe. So just praising God for that door, that open door, that opportunity to share um, the good news of salvation that even when we are going through adversity and challenge that we want to be able to see God's hand we want to be able to feel his presence we want to feel his love and we want to know without a shadow of a doubt that God is with us so um, I was just waiting to see if you had a question um, but I see that um, you don't um, the other thing is um, that, you know, I really, um, and I know that you are, I'm just really praising God for you. You know, in these latter days, um, uh, Sister Andrews, God is really bringing together his people. I'm talking about that have a real heart for God, not church and not just wanting to see miracle signs and wonders and not just wanting to have a good time in church and um, enjoy themselves. Um, I have so many notes I write. I can't find my notes with my questions at the moment. That's okay. Praise God. And so, you know, it's almost those five minutes are almost up, but thank you. I'm so happy that you keep notes um, because I keep a lot of notes myself. It's like so important. I learn so many things and sometimes even when you all ask questions um, or when I'm hearing another pastor or apostle or someone else that is speaking like it can give me a, a, a kind of like a thread um, and a, a deeper revelation and help me to really uh, embrace some of the things that God has been teaching me amen and so we're going to start you know on uh, Monday um, the we have been talking about you know are we really giving it to God and that we really focused on Monday on looking at the fact that very often um, there are, we as people, when we're struggling with something sometimes, amen, that we really want God to take it. We're not quite ready to let it go, but when we really are ready to let it go, we say, Lord, I give it unto you. And the other important thing that we're going to be looking at tonight is the fact that giving something to God is very powerful because it says it says so many things. Um, it says, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I don't know what to do, so I'm putting it in your hands that this is bigger than me. And that saying to God that there is nothing too big, nothing too great for you to handle. Amen? And so it, it kind of reminds me of the thief on the cross, you know, that when he was there and he saw uh, Jesus there, uh, he um, 
asked the Lord, he said, he said to the Lord, please, please, Lord, remember me um, in paradise. Remember me. And Jesus said, today, today, you shall be with me in paradise. He didn't get baptized. He didn't take communion. He never went to the synagogue or church. Um, he never had that, but he got the revelation of who Jesus was. And if we can get that revelation that God is our Father, and that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, and that all power is in his hands, and that um, if we could turn it over to him, what a blessing, what a blessing to realize that he's the one with the power. He's the one with all the perfect knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to be able to see what we can't see. Amen. So, you know, I remember um, there was a time when um, we were losing um, our co-op in New York. We were losing it. And I was thinking and I was praying and I was asking the Lord, you know, to make a way and to help us to stay. But then I ended my prayer with Father have your way, let your will be done, because I recognize that whatever I might feel, whatever I think is the best thing, whatever I might think is the right thing, God knows more than me. God knows what's going to happen uh, months from that date, a year from that date, even five years from that date. And, you know, praise God, it happened at just the right moment. My oldest daughter, who was still living there, she actually got the apartment that, praise God, hey, son, hi, Apostle King Larry, praise God, wonderful to have you. She actually got her apartment, and then not only that, um, but the youngest had gotten married and moved out, and so it gave me this free time to be able to help a sister in need. Um, she has passed on, but it gave me that liberty and that freedom to go and take care of her um, because she didn't have anyone to take care of her. So God orchestrates things because he can see what we can't see. Amen. And so today we're going to be looking at 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. We're going to be looking at are we turning things over to God? Are we really turning them over? And we're going to look at the power of turning things over to God when we recognize that God has all the power. He has all the authority. That God is the one that we are looking to, to be our intercessor, to be our champion, to be our warrior, to fight for us. Amen. And so tonight we're actually going to look at the chapter. Amen. Usually we kind of go from place to place as God just gives us um, connection. Praise. I love you too. I know you have to drive to Vermont. Um, to, um, yes. Praise God, son. I know you do. So you get some rest. And I have been praying for you when I saw that um, tonight um, at... Um, at the uh, teaching that you gave, which was very powerful, I shared it. So I know it's a six-hour trip, and I know that God will get you there safely. When the Lord leads us, I know that he will finish what he has um, set us up to do. Amen. So you get some rest, um, son, Apostle King Larry, Chief Apostle King Larry. I love you. And... God has you. Yes, safe travels. Amen? Amen. And I know he has his angels um, that he has sent in charge over you. Amen? So, um, uh, Sister Andrews, we're going to begin at Second Chronicles chapter 20. And um, most likely you have your Bible ready. Um, and it says in verse 1, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites 
came against Jehoshaphat to battle. So you got all these different groupings of people that are coming against Jehoshaphat. And I know that you know what it feels like when it feels like everyone is against you, when it looks like the enemy is attacking you from the left, from the right, from the front, from behind, where it looks like when you turn around, you can't find a safe uh, place. Amen. And so this is um, what Jehoshaphat saw. He saw all these multitudes of people coming together. Um against him and it says in verse 2 then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying there is coming a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on this side Syria and behold they be in Hazazon Tamar which is in Jide and so someone came to tell him that look look out all these people are coming against you amen and verse 3 says, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed the fast through all Judah. I'm going to read that again. And jo Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed the fast throughout all Judah. So we see that Jehoshaphat, um, he became afraid. And what did he do? He called for a fast throughout the land. And he was seeking the Lord for guidance. And he proclaimed this fast. And fasting is a key. It's a key that we have. When we can't hear, when we don't know what to do, um, we know that the word of God tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear but a power, love, and a sound mind. So we know when we're feeling fear, that means that that's, that's a spirit and it's coming from the enemy. But rather than Jehoshaphat just um, immerse himself in this fear, instead of Jehoshaphat just allowing this fear to take over him and control him, Jehoshaphat used his key. And what did he do? He called for a fast in the land. And it says in verse 4, um, Proverbs, let, let's just look at Proverbs 3 verse 6 that says, In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. Amen. So also, you know, when we're acknowledging God in the midst of um, adversity, when we're acknowledging God, when we are being troubled, especially when we're being troubled on every side, when it feels like we're going through a Job experience, amen, when it feels like what we're going through is all around us, it looked like almost no way out, when we acknowledge him, he will direct our path. Um, and it says, um, and when on um and when and let's look at the book of Acts for a second, um, um chapter two, um, and you can stay there. I'm just gonna read this because I'm I know, praise God, um, our prophetess Shaniqua, it's so wonderful to have you as well. We're looking at Jehoshaphat. We're looking, um, praise God, um, sister, um, sister Chambers. We're looking at part two of are we really giving it to God? Are we really turning it over to God? This is part two. And we're coming from Second Chronicles chapter 20 um, and Jehoshaphat. But we're going to look for a moment in the book of Acts. You don't have to turn because everyone knows um, this scripture, but I just want to read it. It says in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and there were dwelling 
in at Jerusalem Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven. And so what we see here is that in the book of Acts, it's the power of being on one accord. The power of being on one accord. Um, and we see how the Lord, he showed up minorly as the people prayed and waited upon Holy Spirit to come because Jesus had promised that the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit would come. So when we look at Jehoshaphat, when we look at him, Jehoshaphat realizes and he is being told that there are enemies coming from every direction around him. Powerful nations coming up around him and rather than just let that fear grip him, as it says in chap in verse 3 of 2 Chronicles 20, and Jehoshaphat feared feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. That right there is powerful because it's teaching us that, you know, we know that spirit is a fear. The, the um, fear is a spirit that is sent by the enemy, right? We can allow ourselves to be consumed by this fear. We can allow ourselves, you know, to uh, shake and quake at the enemy's threats and his uh, strategies and the fiery darts that he sent, or we can look at the word of God and find this key that Jehoshaphat had. Rather than allow himself to fall into great despair and fear, he set himself, set himself to seek the Lord, set himself, mean that he positioned himself, that he was set in his spirit and set in his mind. He understood that what he needed to do was look to God because God is the one with all the power. Amen. God is our shelter. He is the one that keeps us. Amen. He's a mighty fortress. And God is our father. You know, we as believers, you know, we got to really um, take the word of God in to our heart and believe that um, the father Abba Father is our Father, and that Jesus, that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, amen, and that when the enemy is coming, um, our Father is greater than any earthly father. If any of us have ever had an earthly father or a spiritual father or a male person in our family that really loved and cared about us when we were under threat when someone was trying to harm us out out these men stepped in to protect us and we have to really know that no matter what it looked like no matter what it feel like our heavenly father is stepping in on our behalf that's why the word of god says no weapon no weapon no weapon that is formed praise god hi torian Great to have you. That no weapon, no weapon formed against shall, us shall prosper. Why? Because God is on our side. And the word of God teaches us that if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. And that includes Satan who is already defeated. And so uh, Jehoshaphat, we see, had a relationship with God because when he was being surrounded by the enemy, when all of these hosts was coming up against them, amen, that he knew what to do. He didn't run and hide. He didn't let that fear grip him. Instead, he began to seek the Lord, but he called for a fast for the entire nation. Amen. And so once again, we see the power of being on one accord. He didn't fast by himself, but he's as the king. He said, I'm calling for a fast for everyone in the nation. And it says, um, and Je in verse 5, And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, are not thou God in heaven? Aren't you God in heaven? Amen. And don't you rule over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And 
in your hand isn't there power and might and so strong that nobody can stand against you amen so that is something that god wants us to really have in our spirit that's right romans 8 31 thank you shaniqua for putting the verse there because He's saying something, and this is something that we have to know in our heart, not in our minds, right? And all of us have a testimony. I don't care if it's a huge testimony or a, a multiples of small testimonies. All of us have seen God's hand in our life. All of us have seen something that God has done to take us out of uh, challenging situations, take us out of adversity, when God made a way out of no way, those testimonies, we have to hold in our heart. We have to ask God to keep them in our spirit so that when the attacks by the enemy comes, that we can give our testimony even to Satan. Amen. Because uh, Revelation chapter 12, I think it's verse 11 says that, and they overcame him by what? The blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. That's how we come over Satan. When Satan start trying to, um, you know, lie to us and make us shake and um, make it. Um, we can give him not only the word, but we can say to him, God, I've already seen this trick from you, Satan. We've already been in this place before. And God brought me out when you tried to uh, take my life and I was in the hospital and God brought me out. And I, that same God that brought me out the hospital is the same God that's going to defeat you right now because you're already defeated. Um, you, um, Sister Annette said, I didn't realize that when I gave to God, I could feel so much peace. Haven't had any anxiety attacks, thank God. Praise God, Sister Annette. I'm so happy that you got that revelation. There's a difference between asking God to take something and us giving it over to God, the one that has all power in his hands. Thank you for that testimony. We overcome by our testimony. And it says um, in verse 7, Aren't you our God? who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever. So he's remind, Jehoshaphat is reminding God of who he is. Jehoshaphat is, is speaking power from his mouth. He's speaking what God has already done. Amen. And so, in other words, we can say, God, you're the same God that helped me pay that bill. God, you're the same one that delivered me from anxiety. Lord, you're the same one that um, helped me pay my rent when I didn't have the money. You're the same one that um, healed my body when it was sick and the doctor said that it couldn't uh, be healed. Amen. And so we can remind God and then we top it off by saying, God, you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that did this for me, Lord, I'm calling upon you right now. And I'm putting it in your hands because I know what you can do. I know who you are. I know that you are God. And it says um, in verse um, 9, If when evil comes upon us as the sword judgment or pestilence or famine we stand before this house and we stand in your presence for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction then thou will hear and help let me tell you this is powerful you know why because even back then he was saying your name is on this house but guess what Praise God, Sister Fluka. So glad to have you. But guess what? 
we don't only have God's name upon us. We have God on the inside. Amen. We have Jesus living on the inside of this tabernacle. We have a uh, Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. Praise God. Yes. Hebrews 13, 8. So it's really important that we understand what he was saying. He was saying when evil comes upon us, whether it's the sword or whether it's judgment from people or from the courts or whether it's pestilence or sickness or famine, he's saying we stand before this house and in your presence. See, we got to enter into the presence of God. When we're being attacked, we don't run, right? We don't let the enemy trick us into thinking, oh, we need to go lay down in our bed and be depressed and think that God doesn't love us anymore. No, we fight to go into his presence. Amen. And it says, and for your name is in this house, right? So God lives in us. Amen. And we can cry unto God. It says in our affliction and you will hear us and help us. Amen. So the more we do this, the more we will begin to receive it fully, right? It's like anything else. It's just like simple things, right? Jesus said, if you don't understand earthly things, how can you understand heavenly things, amen? So it's just like a toddler when he starts to try to learn to eat with a fork. He picks up the fork, I mean the spoon. He picks up the spoon. Sometimes the spoon ends up in the eye. It ends up on the face. It ends up everywhere but in the mouth. It takes practice for them to get to the point where picking up a spoon is simple. It's a simple act where it's almost like it becomes second nature. They pick it up. They put it in their mouth. They don't even have to look anymore. They can look at the television and still use that spoon and begin to feed themselves. It's the same with learning to ride a bicycle or any other task. The more we do it, the less we even have to think about it. It becomes our normal. Amen. It becomes very natural to us. So what we want to do is to not let the enemy psych us out and trick us into believing that, oh, I'm going through trials. I'm going through tribulation. Um, people are, there are enemies surrounding me and then go sit in a corner somewhere or go lay down on the bed somewhere depressed. No, we seek his face. We uh, fight to enter into his presence. And if we can't build up that praise on our own, we put on praise music. Amen. We put on songs that minister to us so that we can worship him and enter into his presence. We know that God, what lives in, abides in the praises of his people. And the next scripture that connects to that is that in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. So you see, there are steps to it. Even when our heart is heavy, we can still um, enter into praise. And once we enter into that praise, the presence of God comes. And once the presence of God comes, it breaks that heaviness. Because in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. Amen? And it says... Um, in verse uh, 10, and now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Now the very people that God would not let Israel fight, the very people that God had um, given mercy and grace to when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Now they're turning on Israel. Amen. And verse 11 says, 
Behold, I say, look at how they're rewarding us to come to cast out of thy possession, which thou has given to us. So God had been gracious unto these nations, and now all of a sudden they are going to turn on Israel. How many of us have been kind to people, gracious to people, merciful to people, give sometime our last dime to people for them to turn on us? Amen. But God, he sees it all, right? And God, he is watching all of these things. And when it happens, um, what we are doing now, not physical fighting, for our weapons are not carnal, but money through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're not calling for a battle against people. No, we're coming against the enemy that is trying to use someone to harm us. Amen. Because God loves all of his children. We don't know where God is going to take somebody. They may act like that now, but we pray for their soul. We pray for their spirit, but we also come against what the enemy is trying to do. How the enemy is trying to use them. This is an opportunity for me to say something. The enemy is always killing two birds with one stone. We have to be very careful, right? When the enemy uses people to hurt us, right? He's using them. He's trying to destroy their soul. He's trying to keep them from making it into eternity, amen? But he wants us to be so bitter and angry and unforgiving that he keeps us um, even from getting into heaven, amen? Praise God, uh, Sister Maya. It's so wonderful to have you. And so we have to be very careful that we ask God to search our hearts, that we ask God to uh, give us that spirit of forgiveness and the love of God because the enemy will use anybody. He will use friends. He will use uh, society. He will use our children, um, not like enemies, but do things to try to hurt us and harm us, right? And so instead of us praying and saying, um, Lord, keep my heart pure. Lord, let me have your love. Let me see with your eyes. Let me hear with your ears. Give me that forgiving spirit. Um, if we're not careful, we'll become angry and bitter and God will be looking at us. Amen. And so it says um, in verse, oh, I'm sorry for those who have just come on. We are looking at Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. This is part two of are you giving it over to God? Are you really giving it to God? Praise God, uh, Apostle Marshall. It's wonderful to have you on. And it says in verse uh, 12, Oh, our God, won't you judge them? For we don't have any might against this great company that is coming against us. And this is the beautiful part of his prayer. Neither do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Amen. So Jehoshaphat, he had that revelation that he couldn't do it in his own strength, in his own might. He understood the power of God. He understood that... Um, the, the weapons that we fight against is not flesh and blood, but it's really spiritual. And that we are warring against our enemy, Satan, the adversary. Amen. And God wanted, um, Joseph, Jehoshaphat was calling upon God and saying to God, God, I don't know what to do. This a uh, host that is coming against me is too great for me in my natural self, in my natural understanding and wisdom, in my physical strength, Lord. I just don't know what to do, but you know what? Lord, my eyes are on you, on you. And so he called upon his people, his nation for a fast. And he said in um, 13, and all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, with their wives and their children. 
then upon Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, Ze Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. When we put our eyes on him, when we fast and pray and we prostrate and humble ourselves before the Lord, when we learn how to worship God and enter into his presence, the spirit of the Lord is going to show up because it's the word of God. The word of God is God and God is not a liar and God cannot be against himself. So when the Lord says to us, he dwells in the praises of his people. That is the truth of God. When he says that when we're praising him and we are in his presence, that there is fullness of joy. And, and he says that he will keep what? In perfect peace. Those whose eyes are what? Stayed on him. And that's what Jehoshaphat says. I don't know what to do, Lord, but my eyes are on you. Not on the storm, not on the adversity. Remember Peter when he was on the water? And as long as he had his eyes on Jesus, he was walking on that water. And the moment that he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. Jehoshaphat was saying, no, I'm not going to look at these uh, hosts of armies that is coming against me. I'm not going to look at the trouble that's all around me, but I'm going to keep my eyes on God. And it says in verse 15, and he said, hearken ye, pay attention, listen, um, all of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou king of Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you. This is the word coming from the Lord. Amen. Be not afraid nor dismayed. Do not be afraid. Don't be dismayed by the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. Amen. Hallelujah. The battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord's. And so what God is trying to teach us this week is how to turn it over to God, not to try to tell him to take it from us, but to give it to him for real. Say, Lord, this is bigger than me. This is something beyond me. This is beyond my strength. This is beyond what I can do. And so, Lord, I know you're a God with all power in your hands. I'm going to give it to you. And so that's where the Lord, these are the words of the Lord. He tells uh, Judah and Jerusalem, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed by this great multitude. So that's telling us it doesn't matter how big the problem appears to be. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be like a, a gigantuan problem. We see little David fighting against Goliath, right? And sometimes it's us against the phone company or us against a, a, a job. Right? And God is saying, don't be afraid. Uh-uh, don't worry about how great um, the threat is against you. No, 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 no. Because the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. And it says um, in verse 16, tomorrow you go down against them. Behold, they are going to come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. And then verse 17, he says, you do not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, don't be afraid. Don't be dis dismayed. Tomorrow you go out against them for the Lord be with you. The Lord is saying, don't you fight this fight. This is my fight. I'm God. Give it to me. Turn it over to me. Let me fight your battles. Amen. Very often God wants to uh, give us that victory. Very often God wants to give us, um, you know, that uh 
uh, win over the enemy. But very often we have our hands in the way, right? God is trying to work on that situation, but we become panic stricken and we start to doubt and then we start to try to fix it ourselves. Amen. So instead of allowing God's hand to carry it out, we're going to put our hand on it and interrupt. How many times have you seen um, a serious kind of situation where maybe the parent is driving and there's a child and the child um, tries to put their hand on the wheel while the parent is driving and while the parent is trying to tell the child, no, 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 you can't do that, right? The car is veering and going um, all over the road, right? Because it's a dangerous situation, right? And the car can't go straight on when somebody hand is trying to turn that steering wheel in a different direction. Amen. But God, he sees straight. He sees what's up ahead a week from now, a month from now, two months from now. It might even be two years from now. And we're thinking, oh, God didn't even help me. I prayed and I asked God and God didn't do what I requested. But guess what? God had a plan. We just have to patiently wait upon him sometime. You know, delay is not denial. Amen. But we want to learn to keep our hands off of the steering wheel and let God do it. We want to really learn to let go and let God for real. Amen. How to give it over to him. And then it says, in verse uh, 18, it says, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. That shows humility. That shows that he is humbling himself to the Lord. And it says, And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, everybody in um, Judah and Jerusalem as one, fell before the Lord. And what? worshiping the Lord. Amen. Worship is one of the most, that's right. Stand still and behold the glory of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you um, for that one, uh, Sister Fluka, because when we stand still, we can behold the glory of God. And, but when we looked at this verse in verse uh, 18, when he fell, and bowed himself with his face to the ground with all of Judah and all of Jerusalem with him, falling before the Lord, they worshiped God. I'm telling you, worshiping God is powerful. Why? Because they hadn't won the victory yet, but they were already praising God first and foremost because they were praising God for who he is, almighty God. Amen. Jesus, our champion, Jesus, our victory. Amen. They were already praising God for who he is. The same God that brought them out of Egypt. The same God that parted the Red Sea. The same God that had helped them defeat those seven nations coming out of Egypt. They understood this is the same God. And so they started praising God. See, too often we go to church and we're praising God for what he has done, right? That's praising. But when we can praise God for who he is, just for being God, almighty God, Yahweh God, Alpha and Omega beginning and the end with all power in his hands, that is saying something. So they started worshiping the Lord and they were already saying, Lord, I'm praising you right now for what you're going to do. I don't know how you're going to do it. I'm not sure exactly what you're going to do, but I already know, Lord, that you promised that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You told me that if I keep my eyes on you, if I just trust you in this situation, that you are going to win the battle for me. Because he said, the battle is not yours, but mine. Amen. And it says in 19, and the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And they went forth. Jehoshaphat stood and said, 
Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe, believe, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Amen. That's how we get established. is by our faith and our trust in God. Amen. And acting on that faith. It's not enough to say, Lord, I believe that you are God. But in the midst of the trial, the fire, the storm, the adversity, that's when we prove to God that we trust them. Instead of crying, instead of letting the enemy fake us out and make us think that he got all the power, we start praising God. Amen? And we, and when we don't know what to do, we fast and we pray and we seek his face and ask the Lord what to do. And we see that when they fasted and prayed, the Lord sent a word and told them what to do. And it says, um, believe in God and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper. Amen. We're talking about true prophets of God. We're not talking about false prophets now. We're not talking about people that say stuff just to get your money or just to make you jump up and down. We're talking about prophets whose words are coming to pass. Amen. And sometimes a prophet will give us a hard word. It might not be what we want to hear, but we want to receive it from a true prophet of God. And it says in 21, we got 10 more minutes. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed what? When the king consulted with the people he appointed singers unto the lord you see that he was getting the people ready to praise god he appointed some singers um so that they could praise the beauty of holiness so that they could praise god in holiness and in righteousness right not a god you know i'm gonna praise you and worship you so that you can give me what i want amen no, 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 no. He was talking about uh, worshiping and praising God in the beauty of holiness. Holiness is beautiful. Holiness is powerful. Holiness and righteousness are important um, when we are trying to stand against the enemy. It says, and they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever. Amen. Praise God. Welcome Pastor Parvis. And so isn't that awesome that he chose and selected people because we know that Judah means praise. Amen. Greetings to you from Pakistan, Pastor. And we see that he appointed singers to go out before the Lord and to sing and to praise God before the army, right? Lots of times what he's trying to say is we're putting the cart before the horse, right? And so what we want to go first is our praise because our praise is saying, I believe you, God. You are my champion. You are my warrior. You are a mighty God. And we trust you and we believe you. And so we're going to praise you even before the battle. And then the army followed. And they said, praise the Lord. What? For his mercy endure forever. And when he had consulted the people, um, it says, and when he began, they began to sing and praise. Listen what happened. The Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which they were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Amen. So the Lord is telling us that if we will praise him and worship him in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our adversity, in the midst of our challenges, that our God is faithful and he's full of mercy and that he will fight against the enemy because people are not our enemies. We don't fight against flesh and blood, right? But principalities and powers of wickedness in high places amen and our God is great and he's greatly to be praised amen and so we just thank God for um 
you know, what happened with um, Jehoshaphat. He was a king, amen? He had all earthly power and authority, but he understood that his power couldn't compare to the power of God. He understood that the authority that he even had to tell the people of Judah and Jerusalem that you, I'm calling upon a fast throughout the nation for you to fast and to pray and to worship God, he understood that even with his earthly authority, he didn't have the same level of authority as God. And so he put his eyes on God. And so beloved, that's what I encourage you to do. When the enemy comes in like a flood, it says the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. Amen. Amen. The spirit of the Lord. Our God is faithful. Our God is true. Our God is not a liar. Right? It takes practice to start turning things over to God. Right? And as we talked about last week, that many of us have been betrayed. We have been wounded. We have been hurt. Right? We have been used by people. And that destroyed our lack of trust. But we have to trust in God. We have to learn how to put all our trust in God all of our hope in God we have to learn to do that and so even when our flesh wants to uh, go in a corner somewhere and feel depressed or down or downtrodden even when the enemy is trying to convince us that God is not with us that God doesn't love us that God is not there for us we have to hold on to the sword of the, the spirit which is the word of God and um, I had suggested last week something that God gave to me when I was still, you know, struggling in my faith and still, you know, afraid that God, you know, was going to forsake me or that God had something against me because I was going through so much. He, he told me to take those scriptures, those verses that resonate in my heart, in my spirit, in my mind, and post them on the wall. And when the devil come to give him the word, start speaking those words, start declaring those words, speak it into the atmosphere. And cut on the music that resonate with your heart, with your spirit, with your mind. And start to praise God. And I remember one time, oh my gosh, I was going through one of the most difficult periods of my life. Everything looked like it was going wrong. I'm telling you, anything you can think of. Health, finances, um, family, anything you can think of was going on. And oh my gosh, and I was so wounded and hurt because one of my dearest friends started treating me almost like an enemy. And I, and I just, I felt like I had nowhere to go in the earth. I knew I could turn to God. And I went in this uh, long hallway that was away from the family in the middle of the night. And I'm telling you, Tears were streaming down my eyes. Tears were pouring down my face. I mean, there was a little puddle of water on the floor. I mean, talk about tears. But you know what? I refuse to um, allow the enemy to put me into a place of pity party and feeling sorry for myself. With all those tears, I started praising God. I didn't feel it at first. I just started saying, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just thank you and I praise you, Lord. I didn't feel it at first, but the more I praised him, the more his spirit took over. And before I know it, the joy of the Lord was all in me and around me. And all that pain that I was feeling, that aloneness that I was feeling, I'm feeling like I didn't have anyone. I felt the presence of God. And so that is something that we have to learn to do when we feel like we're in that dark place, God is our light. And we have to fight through it. Amen? Amen. So I um, want to thank everyone for coming on for part two of Are We Giving It to 
God, are we really giving it to him? And believe me, beloved, there is a difference between asking him to take it and giving it to him. When we really give it to him, we begin, sorry, excuse me, to have a kind of peace about it. Amen. Um, because even with my children who grew up in church with me and all of that, and um, from the time they were little, they were taught at home on every Saturday. I had to give them to God and say, Lord, I'm not going to try to um, structure their process with you. I'm not going to try to forge their process with you or make them get closer to you, even though I know that we are close to midnight and I know that we are living in some dark times. No, I said, Lord, I'm giving them to back to you, right? Because they're just on loan to us. All of us come from God and all of us have to go back to God. And so I had to really give them to God and not interfere with their lives. You know, when they wanted wisdom and when I had something to say without interfering, yes, I'm their mother. But guess what? There, he is their father. And he knows more than I know. And he has a plan, right? Because he's saving all of us and our household. The same way we had to go through trials, tribulations, we had to be like the prodigals and come unto ourselves and realize, wait a minute, what am I doing here? Let me go back to my father, my heavenly father, our children have to do the same thing. We would like to help them to avoid obstacles and challenges and adversity as much as we can. That's why we teach them and train them in the way they should go. So when they're old, they will not depart. But we still have to trust God with them. We have to trust God with our family members. Trust God with our friends. Trust God with the people that we are praying for. Amen. So turn it over to him. Amen. So I just want to thank each and every one for coming on. Um, once again, um, um, if this has been a blessing in any way, if this has been a teaching um, that you would want others, just share it. The other thing is that I always ask at the end because it's something the Lord has instructed me to do. If anyone ever have any questions, please send me a message. Um, if the Lord has taught me, if the Lord has revealed it to me, if the Lord has shown me himself, I will answer that question. If I don't know, I'm not going to make it up. I'm not going to pretend to know because there's too much confusion. There's too much deception. There's too much going on where there are conflicting um, messages. But if it's coming from the Lord, that's the only way that I will share it. Amen. So I praise God and let us pray out. Well, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, just thanking you and praising you, Lord God. Just thanking you, Lord God, that all scripture, all scripture was written, Lord God, um, by inspiration, Lord God, that we, Lord God, could learn of you and just learn so much about you, Lord God. Just thanking you, Lord God, for Jehoshaphat's um, um, example, Lord God. Thanking you, Lord God, that you have not changed, Lord God. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And you said in the word, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. In the word of God, in your word, Lord God, you said, stand still and behold the glory of the Lord. And you told us, Lord God, that our weapons are not carnal, but money through you, through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. And that we are not fighting against people, but against principalities. Um and powers of wickedness in high places, Lord God. That, Lord God, we're walking after the spirit and not after the flesh. That, Lord God, sometimes we don't know what to do. But, Lord God, we 
have learned to keep our eyes on you. That, Lord God, when we don't know what to do, we can fast, Lord God, and pray and ask you to lead and guide and direct us, Lord God. When the enemy is coming in like a flood, Lord God, we will stand flat-footed, unmovable, unshakable in our faith and say, God, I'm turning it over to you. This is bigger than me, Lord God. This is something beyond me, but it's not too big for you, God. And so I'm turning it over into your hands. So Lord God, I just want to thank you for your people. We're living in the latter days. There's much darkness, Lord God. The darkness is great. The wickedness is great. But great are you, Lord God. Greater is your light. The light overcomes the darkness. And greater are you that is in us than he that is in the world. So Lord, just continue to bless your people. Strengthen your people. Encourage the hearts and the spirit and the minds of your people, Lord God. And Lord, we will always give you the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. So good night, everyone. I, I I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. Amen. And so have a wonderful evening. Continue blessings. It's almost midnight. The church, the bride must make herself ready. Amen.